right, all right, all right. How you doing over there, Mr. Uh, good, Mr. Good. Julian Morales out there? Good, Gordon, all right, welcome, welcome to Real Talk, Real Stories, Real Change. And now we're going to do a little spin with spin with real topics. With uh, I got a special guest on today by the name of Mr. Julian Morales. He's the executive director. But this is going to be uh, episode number eight on my end. And I just want to say that you're in for a treat because we've been talking about all these stuffs. But I just want to say that I'm your host, Gordon Watt, and my co-host, and we're going to be switching over back and forth, Mr. Julian Morales. Say hi, Mr. Julian Morales. Hello, everybody. How you doing today? Right, let me get this intro in here. Let's hide, let's hide us, and then we'll, we'll get together on this show. Let's start going. Welcome to episode eight of, of Real Talk, Real Stories, Real Change. And now, the, now it's going to be Real Topics. I wanted to introduce you to Mr. Julian Morales, Executive Director of the Real Talk El Paso out there. And I just, Hello, want, to give you, I just want to give you a brief, brief, uh, brief um, introduction because... When I met Mr. Julian Morales, he was, um, I'm going to not take away all his thunder, right? But when I see a man that wants to change and give back to this community, you know, for some reason, the Lord up above, God, intervention, whatever you guys want to call it, they put good people together for a right reason. And I met him maybe a few years back, and he's, he's actually the executive director of the real talk program out there in El Paso, Texas. Yes. And I just wanted to say like, it's just been an amazing pleasure working with you, being your friend, brothers in arms Thank and everything you. else. Mr. Julian Morales, give a, give a little bit something about yourself there. Um, uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julian Morales. I'm uh, like Gordon said, I am the director of real talk youth impact program out here in El Paso. I'm, I'm 10 years out of prison. Uh, I served uh, a 10 year sentence and then I got out for three weeks and went back for another two and a half years. Um, I finally learned my lesson and uh, two years ago decided to make a change in the community. <laughs> and uh, those things that I didn't like that was going on in the system, um, I decided to start an organization that I believe is, is um, helping the youth before they get into those steps that we took. And catching right. them at a young age, yes. Right, right, right. It's same, same like me here. It's like, it's like when we, all we're doing is scratching an itch for the community right now between both of our programs, and you know, me and me and Julian had a conversation just the other night because of what what's happening with the pandemic and the COVID, the closures and everything yes. else. We wanted to say that you know we both can still keep pushing this program, and he's been getting a lot of traction in his area. Because a yes. lot of people want to be associated with what he's got going on in El Paso, and the same goes out for out here. So we wanted we wanted to we wanted to say we're going to combine forces, bring you topics, bring you real change, bring you real people that's been down in the system. In fact, you just had somebody somebody mention out to you yesterday on that they want to be part of what you got going on with that right now, right? Yeah, so we, we've been getting a lot of uh, people reaching out now that they're um, watching the show, you know, listening to us talk and what the program is about. So, yeah, we've, we've got people interested. And if anyone's listening right now um, in the El Paso area or in the Las Vegas area, if you're interested with getting with Real Talk and being a part of uh, bringing change to this society, bringing change to, to our youth, uh, reach out to uh, realtalkyp.org or realtalkep.org. Uh, EP.org is going to be El Paso and uh, Real yep. Talk y YIP is for Vegas. But um, yeah, there's people reaching out. We're, we're hitting on topics um, in the community right now. We're focusing on helping the foster kids, kids that are homeless, bringing mm. resources, um, trying to bring resources to the show, people that have um, services to offer that are free for the kids that are that are going through stuff. And then we have guests that come on and share their story. We just had a guest two weeks ago 
talk about um how he he suffered from uh almost committing suicide he he had forced his girlfriend to have an abortion and she couldn't deal with the pain of that and she killed herself he found Whoa. her and uh he he attempted to kill himself due to that so those are the kinds of stories that we have uh, and the topics that we talk about um i know a lot of the topics are taboo they're molestation they're they're um they're about rape they're about about abortion they're about murder um, people committing violent crimes, but you know, I think with us sharing and and, and peeling off those layers of, of of onion that we also carry, right? It, it it allows other people to relate and say, "Man, I I went through that. Maybe maybe I should speak to someone about it." And it's not about going out and talking about it in public. It's it's we do it because we we're strong enough to do that now, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, believe me, at one point I wasn't. But our, our whole goal is to get people to, through our stories, through hearing us open up, for them to go get help if they're going through something, to go speak to someone, you know, go get professional help. And if you have kids that need to hear these stories that you feel are already down that path, bring them on to Real Talk and we'll, we'll share with them the reality and, and, and the truth behind living that life, right? Right, right, right. It's so, it's so important that we try to get um, the youth at a young age because... A lot of times we didn't have this type of programs back in the day at no. all. So it's like now that we can actually actually give back to the community in a way to learning, learning all our experiences, our wisdom, our, our past bullshit that yeah. let us go on to doing bigger and better things. It's just a matter of how are we going to get them so that we can change one youth at a time. And I know there's a big 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 factor going on with um you guys in el paso and stuff like that so it's like it's really interesting to see that you know how can guys like us he's got oh let's i got the green shirts it represents real talk las vegas he's got the orange shirt because that's yes. their colors out there right out there in el paso tux and el paso texas and let me ask you this um when you started this journey right when you started this journey um, oh, let me, in fact, let me, let me, let me reverse that back for a little bit, um, a minute. I know you was under management variable for a yeah. long time. Explain to the audience, what is that management variable and what you did to get in there? And, you know, for, a, so for some people, they don't understand what is a management variable and for how long you did. Yeah. So a management variable is kind of like, um, an administrative segregation where you're put into, um, what they call the shoe, the special housing unit. And uh, first you start, I already had a management variable going in because I was a confirmed gang member through the FBI database. Right. So I, I already had a management variable where I couldn't walk in a medium custody prison. I had to walk in the United States penitentiary, um, a, a, a max, right? Right. But then when I got into the max, you know, I, I attempted to stab the warden and, you know, I almost caught a life sentence um, behind a 10 year sentence that I got for drugs. And, and, and these are the topics that we like to touch on. Right. Um, here I am, a, a young, a young man, nonviolent. My offenses were for drugs, but here I am forced and put into this jungle that we call prison. Right. Right. I'm put into this jungle and I have to survive. And my, my, my thought and my, my process was to survive. I had to make a name. So I tried stabbing the warden, which was the biggest mistake. <laughs> yeah that I've ever done. And, you know, there's, there's a difference between doing time and then there's a difference between doing dirty time. Oh right? yeah. Explain, and as, explain that. Yeah. Yeah. And as a rookie, when you first go into prison, it's your first time. Um, you know, you're, you're young, you're a knucklehead. The older guys use you because they can light a fire in you really quick. Just saying, Hey, that guy said something about Wrong. you. Here's a, yeah. here, here's a stick, go stick them. Right. So you end up doing a lot of solitary, you know, 45 day stints, no commissary, no visits, no telephone calls. And then it's called dirty time because all, all you're doing is adding more stress to yourself. And that's exactly what I did. And um, by trying to attack one of theirs, obviously I got beat for months on end while I was in solitary. Uh, mm -hmm. I got beat to a bloody pulp the day it happened. Um, I, I always tell this story that I, I woke up in my cell and uh, feeling all the pain all over my body and blood. And, and, and then I realized, what the heck did I just do? Why? Why did I do this, right? So I was in there for, for four years, three months, and then I got out of solitary, and um, I went right back in two days later. Um, for those of you that don't know, and, and, and I, 
I touched on this topic a lot when I go with the kids anywhere to the schools. What you put on your body is is very important as far as tattoos. Um, getting out of the shoe, getting out of the shoe, I would move to another prison. And, uh, you know, I have certain tattoos on me that represent what I used to stand for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I was asked to remove those and I told them, no, they can remove them themselves. And we, we got into it there in the cell um, one day and a half out of the out of the shoe. And I'm already fighting for my life again because of what I have tattooed on my body. Right. I went I went back into solitary and, uh, it, you know, it's a lonely experience. But um, for me, it was a growing experience. It, it, it showed me my, my strengths, my weaknesses. And um, it, it took me to a place where I didn't, that was my biggest fear as a kid was ending up in a jail cell. And here I was in a, in a tomb, right? I'm buried alive at this point. Um, Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nobody can hear you. Nope. No, no, nobody can hear you. You're, <laughs> you're in a tomb uh, made of concrete and steel. And, and, and your mama can't hear you. Nobody can hear you. Nobody can come take you out. You know, but it, it, it taught me a lot about myself. And I've taken that. I've taken those experiences now that I'm out. And I, I apply them in my day-to-day -day life. And, and uh, it, you know, it's been successful. It, it's been very successful. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, 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 it's really, really. See, for guys like that, us that done a long time, did the dirt. I mean, I could tell you stories for days. A lot of my viewers going to be watching some of this on the replays, you know, but it's, it's like, I had, I had a story one time where, uh, um, they told me, Hey, Hey, what? Hold this guy down for a minute. I said, well, what do you mean? Oh, we got to burn off his tattoo. We're either going to burn it off or we're going to cut it off. That's yeah. it. Right. And it's just how it is. You mean, that's just part of the mentality and the physical abuse, the mental abuse that you gone and you live by a certain set of rules, yeah. no matter whether you step down from the, the U.S. Penitentiary, the level four, the the level yards down to a FCI to the medium, all the way down to the camp. There's certain rules, but there's the rules are all mental, a yeah. lot of the times. You mean, and then it, to see Mr. Uh, Morales uh, miraculously come out because all my speakers, all the people that we talk to, all the people that we associate with right now, we all recognize each other because we all can tell. We have like a sixth sense yeah. about each other that. Not anybody can um can have besides having the um, these it's, type of experiences. It's it's like uh it's like back in the day when people would come from Vietnam and they say, oh, he's got that twenty yard stare, right? And you <laughs> you can point out you can point out the people that have come back from war, right? Yeah, 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 it, yeah. It's it's just it's the same thing. Yeah, and this is and this is the topics that that no one talks about on the effects of a prisoner, um, you know. It, it's it causes trauma it causes trauma oh, yeah. you witness things a lot of the times that humans aren't meant to witness these kinds of things and and it's not that you're involved with it you can be the 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 white collared guy in prison it, it doesn't and, matter yeah, yeah and you're gonna witness something that's yeah. gonna change your life yeah. and and never leave you the same and this is the stuff that when we get out people don't understand right. and, and and that's why real talk you know, us guys that have been together, when we get a new member, you know, our goal is to 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 see, all right, this person, if this person just got out is how can we help now yep. as members of Real Talk? How can we help this other member member and, and, and adjust, you know, with their adjustment? And I always share my story with with the with new members and people that just get out of prison of, mm -hmm. of look, when I first got out, I wanted to hit the the the, the streets running 100 miles an hour. Uh -huh. But it doesn't work that way. Yeah, you can't you can't catch up. You you no. can never make up for lost time. Yeah, but you need to be, and it sounds ugly, but when you first get out of prison, you have to be so selfish. You have to focus on you and getting yourself together. Because if not, you're no good for anybody else. And a lot of us get out, and as soon as we get out, we want to be. Oh, I need to make money for my kid. Oh, I need to go do this. Look, you weren't doing yeah. that for the last fifteen years. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry they're gonna be okay yeah take your yeah. time focus on yourself get yourself together build a strong foundation and then you're useful to everybody else that you've been useless to for the last however many long years you've been incarcerated yeah yeah i mean that's so true because one of the main one of the main aspects is you know you've been out of sight out of mind for 10 5 15 18 20 years life went life went on 
Yeah. Now you all of a sudden you want to jump back out, do things that you never done before, and at the same time you're only hurting yourself because you don't know what the hell is going on in this new world. Yeah. I mean, I re I remember um at the halfway house where I was at, I remember walking over the street and I forgot about damn cars. <laughs> you oh know, yeah. This was, this was one of those things, right? Now let me ask you another question, right? How is it being that ex? I remember you you, you were talking maybe a few weeks ago that uh, a situation happened. And I'll uh, explain to the audience that you're legally blind. So you only yeah. can hear certain things, right? You had a guy come up to you and say something and you kind of like backpedaled because you didn't know oh, where yeah, it came yeah. from, right? Explain to yeah, explain so, to me. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I've, I'm losing my I'm losing my eyesight due to an accident that happened in prison. Um, it accelerated a disease I have called retinitis pigmentosa. So my vision is horrible. I can't see. Uh, I can only see silhouettes. Um, so I went to the barber shop and I'm sitting there and it's in my old neighborhood. And um, it's it's in the old barber shop where I used to go do a lot of bad stuff in that neighborhood. Keep it real. Keep it real. Tell them what you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I, I, I used to do a lot of stuff there. So uh, this young man gets off the barber chair. And uh, I'm sitting there, and uh, I feel this presence standing over me, and he goes, hey, yo, uh, I think I know you. And I, I looked up, and I'm like, this is it. Like, uh, yep. <laughs> like I, I'm no chance of defending myself, right? Yeah. But uh, he says, aren't you that that uh, that OG guy or that that guy, that, that program that came to talk at our school? And then, and then I felt like this ease, right? Right. And my, and my wife is watching this the whole time from the car. You know, she drives me everywhere. I can't drive. So, um, and he says, Hey, because of you, I've, I've decided to get away from that and make a change because of what you guys came and talked about. You know, it was four of us that went to talk that day. And right. that day, I, that day I was feeling down, you know, we've been going through a lot of losses with the coronavirus and with uh, members, money, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's bills to be paid. So I was feeling down about myself that day and just kind of second guessing if I should keep doing what we're doing, keep trying to fight to keep it open. And with him saying that and just telling us, thank you, it, it, it really, uh, it, it filled me back up and it got you and made me realize why, why it is you. that we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It got you because i Julian put something on Facebook and I called him back up. I said, what happened, bro? He said, for at first, he was afraid because he was thinking, "Oh, this is this is how it's going to end right here." Because he, he, <laughs> part of the part of the stuff that um, it's it's still in the back of my head. You know what I mean? Like yeah. some of the stuff that that I've done. But you know, I made amends with a, a lot of the people. You know what I mean that I've done wrong to and stuff like that. But you know, and I told him this is exactly the reason yeah. why we do what we did. Because all it takes is to change one child, one youth, yeah. one parent. One person to go on in the, in the right direction that can ultimately save a lot more people than what we got, than what they have going on, especially like everything is down. Even like for us, our, our nonprofit, our building, our the, the place where we went, when you talked at here in Vegas, they're not looking at it to like August, right? So yeah. we decided to do this online, be able to put it on somewhere so people can refer back to and understand that, you know, the, this stuff is can be at least come back full circle where we can refer back to these and we're going to bring more of these. I'm going to be working with Julian a lot more because a lot of the members are either busy tending to their families, but it's like we can, that's why we did it in the afternoon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Where do you see, um, real talk EP going after this is all said and done. So we, we've come up with the new, we're keeping our same vision, our same, uh -huh. uh, our same mission. Um, but we're going to take a new direction for the first year coming back. Okay. So uh, our goal is going to be to get into every school that um, that has a demographic of troubled teens. And my goal is to get in there and, and, and really, really get into these schools and try to build a partnership, a relationship with these schools so that our program is used for truancy. Our program is used for those. Oh, nice. For those children that are having problems um and we're going to focus on that this next year and our fundraising if anyone's listening and you want to donate to real talk none of this money will be spent until next um year when we open back up but we're trying to build up our fund 
So when we do come back and we start having our classes, we have money for the kids to do their activities. But our focus this next year is to really go into these underprivileged schools and uh, underprivileged communities and just try to make a difference and uh, have a bunch of events where we can get families to come out and uh, and have these kids listen to us and just connect with us mm -hmm. and uh, make a greater impact. You know, somebody said something to me the other day that um, it really put things into perspective. And they asked me if Real Talk El Paso closed its doors right now, would anybody miss it, right? And uh, I want to be the kind of company that if I close my doors, yes, we will be missed. Right. And and where we can't afford to close our doors. So right. um, that's our next goal is just building our foundation a little bit more, building a rapport with the community, showing them how effective we are, and uh, just in hopes that somebody really finds the substance to what it is that we're doing, what it is that we're preaching, um, what right. it is that we're sharing with these kids. Because, you know, I, I know a lot of people have a misconception about us and they have a bad taste in their mouth when we tell them that it, this is felons that are doing this, um, ex-inmates, people that have been incarcerated. And um, they get a, a, an icky feeling about it, and, and, and which in all rights they have. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I want to build that, 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 that trust, and I want them to see that we're, we truly love these kids. We truly love what we do. Yes. And, um, and we really take to heart every word that, that we give to these kids because it's tough to do what we're doing. Like you said right now, there's, there's people that still would love to get their hands on me. There's people out there that <laughs> yeah. there's, there's people out there that I'm sure speak ill of me when they see these. They might put some ugly comments. Oh, that guy this, that guy that. And it's all true. And it's all true. All 100%. I was everything that you can think of in the book. Just like Eminem did on 8 Mile. Yes, I was a crackhead. I was a cokehead. Yeah. I was a meth head. Hey. I was yeah. a jack boy. I was a dough boy. I was, yeah. I was everything. I used to pimp women out. I did it all. But what I'm doing now surpasses all of those things that I'm exactly. doing. Exactly. And, and the reason and the why behind what I'm doing now surpasses right. the why I was doing all of that. So, you know, if you're uncomfortable and, and you don't know how to feel about us coming into your school, um, take a listen. Take a listen to the words that we share. L listen to our program. And uh, I guarantee you there's, there's not a doctor out there, and I'll put money on this, Yep. There's not a single doctor out there, PhD, sociologist, psychologist, psychiatrist that can connect, that can connect with these kids the way that we can. And, and, and you know, it'd be a disservice to the community not to allow us to come speak to these kids that really need it. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's like we have, in fact, we've had CEOs, CEOs come to Real Talk when we was live at the Pearson Company, CEOs, doctors, PhDs, counselors, social workers, everything that you can go up. And when they see the passion and the talk and the, the extreme love we have for these kids and they look at us, it's just because we don't have the fancy degrees. It's just yeah. we, we don't have the placard on the, in the back of my in the back of, in of us. And one of the one of the main key words that um, Julian said is one of the qualifications to become a speaker to where to become is you had to have done some time. You've had to yeah. have got some experience because in what Miss Cherie says, we're doctrines of the streets. You can't yeah. have somebody in social work not be hands out in the streets, lived it, breathed it, rose above it, came out on the top. And be able to mentor these kids in a way that they they understand, because you cannot take somebody with ten years of school, put them again, put up put them against a a kid that's going through some turmoil, and he don't understand, and he and they're gonna say, oh, um, it's something to do at home. No, it starts with everything else that's around them. You know what I mean? And yeah. One of the one of the main things is like, we've been there, done that. I mean, when between between. Me and Julian, just on these two, this is over 25 years of incarceration experience, not even right. counting, counting probation. Yeah. And then you, when you put all of the other members that he has and that we have together out here, it's going to be a really, really, because you come from different angles. You come yeah. from different cultures, different religions, different backgrounds, different things that some of these kids might not uh, relate to me. But they might relate to Julian. They might relate yeah. to other, the other speakers that we that we had on on earlier. Let me ask you this: What kind of topics you guys got going on in um that you're speaking about now with your program, uh, real talk, real topics? Give me one topic you guys talked about maybe recently. I know you um, had. 
the most the most recent topic was uh I believe was dealing with with your father with your stepkids, right? Mm. Um so okay. as as far as um as parenting goes cuz you know real a lot of people forget, you know, at real talk it isn't just about inmates um speaking right. to the kids, right? It's about having parenting cohesiveness and uh, and and some of the topics that we're touching on now is is the parenting, right? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, you know attitude does reflect leadership and uh if if you're the parent of the household you're the leader of the household and everyone's attitude in the house uh will reflect yours so a lot of the times when these kids have a really bad attitude you know it's 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 at the root it's at the parent so we talked about about dealing with that and and, and how it is dealing with being um quarantined quarantined right. and all of that but right now we're moving into um we're gonna start moving into more testimonials with real talk, real talk. Okay, nice. And then um, here with you is where we'll touch on a lot of this, yeah. The parenting stuff, the the you know the the counseling part of it, the mentoring part of it. Uh -huh. Um, but you know the the topics that that we touch on uh, that I want to start bringing to the surface is topics that that we drop the ball on a lot of the times. You know, um, with with education, um, you know, getting these kids. Um, getting more help, getting funding for the schools, right. getting more programming. You know, all of these topics need to be brought to the forefront as well. Because um, if not, it'll never get fixed. And what we do is just a small part to this big ball of a system that we call, right? Right. And, um, and if we can bring all that together and, and help these kids, we can make a big difference. It's... Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's some of the topics that we're touching on. Nice, nice, and nice, nice. Yeah, I had a, uh, I had a parent the other day message me, left me, a, left me, um, left me a number, called her up, um, gave her my opinion because we're not legally able to do that. But yeah. she was telling me the red flags that was going on in 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 her household. Right? It's like yeah. all of a sudden he has, he has like. Six hundred dollars in cash, and he lost it gambling and all this stuff, and then he's going crazy at home. This and that. I mean, it's certain so many things going on with these kids with the uh, COVID, and I we just seen the news about what their school class is going to be on, and it's going to be more need for a program like ours to get yeah. to these kids because they're stressing the hell out. Also, yeah, you know I mean they they should. I mean you you I see with you had a situation where your 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 child just recently. I mean, there's these are just part of um part of the after effects of being um, home in this pandemic and everything else. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's like one of those things that um, just uh, things that needs to be addressed on certain, certain aspects. So yeah, it's, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's um, there, there's, I would like to talk on a lot of topics, um, but I, I, I believe it would get a little too real for people on, on the real talk, real topics. Um, right. So I'm trying to keep the topics as, as light as possible. Um, but man, yeah, there definitely needs to be a conversation started about our youth and, and, and which direction they're headed and what our responsibility is as adults. Um, not only, even if they're not our kid, you know, um, I, I share this with people all the time. I, I studied native American religious studies and mm -hmm. there's a, there was a tribe that, no matter, you know, if the woman was pregnant and all the men that had sex with her, that child was everybody's son. And when that child cried and then that child was hungry, whoever was next to him picked him up, nurtured him and fed him, right? Mm -hmm. And, and in, in the same sense, when we're out here in the streets and we see this, we should be that same kind of person and, and stop and, and, and see if they need help. And, um, and you know, those of you that, that watched last night or if you haven't, go to Real Talk EP, we had... Um, a real talk EP on Facebook. We had um, an interview last night with Josue La Chica, and he's the director of, of a group out here for the Child Crisis Center. And they do outreach and they do 24 hour services. And 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 they do this this stuff that we're talking about, right? Is right. is being there for these kids. And when these kids call, is going and picking them up, getting them to the right place, getting them to a safe spot, getting them help, not judging them, not going in and, oh, you shouldn't be on drugs. Oh, you know. A lot of times we want to start yelling at our kids before we connect and, and yeah. we need to connect with them before we can start teaching and, and, and correcting. Um, cause they're not, you know, they'll, they'll never listen to us, but yeah, that's basically 
I mean, that's just part of part of the deal because if anybody's going to judge, we're the last people to judge on anybody. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're the last people to judge on anybody because we didn't like it when we when we were getting judged. That's why we half the time it's we did what we do to either get attention or whatever it was money. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, but it all stems from within. So when you when you guys do outreach and that program and that interview interview you did yesterday, is just the fact that you're available, just the fact yeah. that you're there for them, just the fact that you know there's an outlet for them to turn to instead of going deeper down that cliff. Yeah, is something that that. You know, you cannot put a price on that. And if if people want to judge us for trying to do this, because I'm gonna tell you the truth, Julian, I'm gonna ride this thing to the wheels fall off. I mean, I yeah, got yeah. I, yeah. I, I got friends telling me, Gordon, let it go, let it go. I said, what if it was your kids? Would you want yeah. me to let it go? Right? What if, what if it was your 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 grandma taking care of the grandkids that you left? Would you want me yeah. to let it go and figure out a way? I mean, time consumption is certain certain things that might be. Um, thing and that's besides doing what I do on the side for these other things I do, right? Yeah. I mean, but this is gonna. This is my passion, my dedication, and there's also a big why behind it. Hey, let um, let me ask you this. I know you you played a little uh, intro music for me. Oh yeah. Let me let me hear the intro. This is gonna be real talk. This is gonna be real talk, real topics. Uh, intro uh, once intro, again. Uh, you don't understand, uh, Mr. Julian is he's associated, he's connected with uh, the music industry out there. In fact, this man can rap. <laughs> oh, I'm not too good. I'm not too good. I'm not too good. But you know, this this song is there. We're working on it. Um, Alana Tilano and myself made the beat, um, and it's for our intro. It's, it's right. Just look, it's just a jingle. It's nothing serious. And then um, he's one of our members. He's actually the director for our felons, our members. And um, Cindy Lou, uh, Cindy Lou Flutes, thank you so much for being on this track. She's actual vocals on it, but uh, I'll go ahead and play. I don't know how the sound will be, but this will be our intro. You know, just, so. They're going to do it all professional later, but he gave me first crack at this right now. And I was like, oh. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I need the maracas right here. I mean, I I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we we you know we're uh we're getting we're getting the show a little better. Our production uh, should be um looking a lot better here soon, and um, we'll have more clips, more clips, and more um more production. Can you still hear me, Gordon? Hello, hello. See me doing this on the replay. Did you? Are you back? I'm back. I don't oh, know. All right. Happened. Well, you probably probably um the bandwidth, but I just wanted to say to me, um, if you're in the EP area, we are gonna do a closeout, and then this way, if you're in the EP area or just that side of the west, because he's Pacific, you're a mountain, mountain, mountain area, right? Texas, mountain time, Texas, yeah. yeah. I mean. We're gonna we're gonna be I'm gonna be working with uh, Julian more often since because the time constraints with everybody else. How can they get in touch with you so that um, they can reach out if they're in that area? So they can call me at 915-920-3996. Once again, 915-920-3996. They can send an email at info at realtalkep.org. And if you're interested in coming on to the show, sharing your story. Um, if you've been through something, you don't need to be a member right now to yep. come on and share your story, your testimony, your walk in the streets. Reach out to me at info at realtalkep.org or go to our Facebook, which is Real Talk EP. And uh, we'll be more than happy to have you on our show and for you to share with us. All you OGs, all you guys out there that, that have done time and, and you always talk about how, how right. is it that I can get back to the community? How is it that I can help? How is it that I can do what you're doing? Guess what? You don't need to be fully committed right now. I no. just need 30 minutes of your time, brothers. 30 minutes of your time to come on, tell your story, and in hopes that you can inspire somebody to change their life. You guys always talk about it. I'm not right. asking for money. I'm not asking for you to go somewhere and, and go support us. 30 minutes in front of your computer. You do that every day looking at Facebook. <laughs> come on. Come on, you guys. 
all you guys out there, you share your story. Tell me how big and bad you were in the streets, and yeah, and, and, and how and how you've changed now, and and you're a father, and you love your kids, and you you're taking care of your household. Alex, absolutely. I mean, I do the same thing. I got people um, telling me they want to jump on right now, and it's like they don't have to be they don't have to be anything else right now. If you're in that area, contact Julian. If you're in uh, the Las Vegas area, Hawaii area, anything on this side, give me a call. Find me on yes. Facebook. You find me on the show right here. Find me at realtalkyap.org. Follow up. You can either watch the replays on YouTube. You can follow it on the podcast, right? I'll probably put this on my blog because I'll be doing a, a uh, be doing revamping my whole blog because it got it got hacked. I mean, I've been going through that for the past month. But I just want to say I want to welcome you guys. Welcome that people that did that want to give back to the community that don't have the time to do it. Give yes. me 20 minutes. All I'll do is have fun with you because all we do is bullshit about this stuff anyway and see yes. how we can help other people. All right, Julian, thank you for joining. Gordon, Thanks for thank you for in. having me. Absolutely. So next week, I'm he's going to be the host. I'm going to be the co-host, right? Nice. Yes. Thank you so much for bringing uh, being with us this week. If you have any, if you have someone that needs to hear this message, please share this out. Reach to Julian, myself, or anybody who wants to be part of this program, reach out to me at Gordon Watt on Facebook. You can find me or realtalkyip.org. If you like this type of content, share it with somebody else because you don't know if you're saving a life or yes. somebody's household at the same time. Find us on YouTube, Real Talk, Real Stories, Real Change. Or find me at gordonwatt.com. I'll be bringing up all of these reruns into place. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to please like, share, subscribe, and figure out how you can get more involved. And thanks for listening. All right, Julian. Thank, thank you, you. Gordon. All right, and I'll give you a call later. We'll drop the, the intro and keep working on that. I, I want to hear that music. In all fact, right. the next time we're going to hear you rap. All, with right. All, that. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, Have Gordon. Have a good night. All right. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.